Uh, so this is a this is a really special occasion. I am so um, overjoyed to be the MC. Ben Sorensen's my name. If you've been living under a rock that I'm not under. <laughs> um, and uh, this is a absolutely amazing uh, piece put together by an absolutely amazing human who then found another team of humans to be even more amazing. And thank you for turning up and supporting an amazing Australian talent, the one, the only, the man himself, Chris Stanley. Woo! Yeah. You can all go home now. Um, good evening, everyone. I've written everything down, otherwise I'm scrambled brain at the moment and I'm gonna forget everything. Um, good evening and welcome to a very special preview screening of Uncharted, The Ox's Redemption, a Uncharted fan film. Um, hope you all are having a great PAX 2023. Uh, my name is Chris Stanley. Uh, some of you may know me online as Cosplay Chris or the bloke who paints kids' toys with shoe polish and uh, dirt from his parents' driveway. Um, I'm the executive producer on the film, and I also have a small cameo as background tree number three. Um, now, now, before we uh, get the show on, I'd like to introduce you to some very special people, and there's going to be a lot of clapping, so uh, get your clapping hands ready. Uh, firstly, please welcome Daniello Barcelli and Sarah Leica, the directors, writers, producers, and editors of Uncharted. <laughs> I would love to. Uh, I would love to welcome Karush Karimian, who plays Karush Rastami, our villain. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Next up, I would love to introduce Nathan Bates, who is playing my brother, Samuel Drake. <laughs> and my amazing and long-suffering fiance. Chloe Kippen, who was playing Elena Drake. Now, I'd also like you to give a warm round of applause and embarrass some people down in the audience. Uh, <laughs> who's live streaming now and my oldest friend since year three, 1997, we're old, don't judge us. I'd like you to please welcome Mr. Josh Hayes, who's play who plays Crank in the film. Very warm welcome to Matt Bedell and his beautiful partner, Ebony Kashiri. Matt plays Bridget in the film, and Ebony was one of our amazing boom operators. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> and last but absolutely certainly not least, I would like you to please welcome Chris and John Boz, and Chris's amazing fiance, Olivia. These boys have scored the film and done the sound music of the film. Please give them a warm round of applause. <laughs> Uncharted The Oxus Redemption is a not-for-profit fan film, so Sony, please get serious, we're all good. Um, and it takes place right after the events of Uncharted 4, uh, so way before the epilogue you see right at the end of gameplay. Um, we find Nate and Elena are still operating under JMI, right before the transition of the business title, just so there's not any confusion. Um, and Nate has been brought back to the life he left behind after a tragic event. Now we're delving, we're delving into Persian culture, Persian mythology with a brand new villain, Karush Rostami. Um, now playing Nate has consumed me for, uh, for months and I relished every single minute playing him. And not to sound cheesy, but I definitely miss playing. Um, and all I want to do is do the character justice and hopefully make you all proud and also make these guys proud who have worked their absolute asses off over the last couple of months. Uh, the idea came, uh, it's actually been in gestation uh, since 2016 when I first cosplayed as Nathan Drake. Um, 
and then I did uh, a little uh, shoot with a friend of mine, Brendan Neaton, which you know planted that seed even more. And then January this year, um, I reached out to Daniela and Sarah, who we've worked the three of us together before on cosplay shoots, because I knew they're the ones that could do it, um, and we just want to do these characters justice. Um, <coughs> sorry, I got lost. How cool is that? Um, no, we just wanted we just wanted to do justice to these wonderful characters that Amy Henny and Naughty Dog have created. Uh, they're so well rounded, rich, and above all, just real. They're flawed. Um, that's what I love about Nate. He's flawed. He's pig headed. He's not a boy scout. Um, just like me. <laughs> um, now, even though all the cast and crew couldn't be here tonight, they're here in spirit, um, and I couldn't be more proud of everyone who's been a part of this production. Uh, the dedication love and professionalism uh, over the last couple of months has left me beyond chuffed. I love you all um, and thank you for trusting me uh, and to all you beautiful people for attending tonight, thank you, enjoy and uh, of course, see Parvis Magna. Thank you. Parvis Magna, is that like the Magna wagon that I've had? <laughs> <laughs> Latin was never a strong point. Ooh, Benny. Oh yeah, hang on. So it's a 15 minute preview of the film. The full film is nowhere near done yet. We're clocking in about an hour for the full film. Yes. So the full film is released on the 4th of November. This is a 15 minute preview and at the end a brand new trailer that hasn't been released yet and that'll be released online tomorrow. So. Thank you guys once again. Enjoy. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And overall popcorn. All right. Where's the play button? <laughs> problem with that is my uh, neurospicy brain will not let me sleep until I see the whole bloody thing. <laughs> That's amazing. So, let's get into the chatty part of this. Uh, Chris and team, get up here and grab a seat. Randomly in the order we discussed before. Some people got that, but we had to crew. Uh, so, uh, during this panel, please take photos, please tag, please involve as many people as you can because this is such a wonderful project and uh, it's very important that we get it out to as many people as possible. Now, Chris. Benjamin. I am plugged in. He is the main guy. Benjamin? Yeah. Okay. I didn't, but it was funny. <laughs> uh, so, this is uh, your your dream. This is the what you put together. Now, uh, the quality of the work that you put out is absolutely amazing. Uh, the people you work with are obviously amazing. You all nodded. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think it's a great story to tell about why this story, why this time, why now. Um, I think because I, even though got closure at the end of Uncharted 4, I wanted more. Um, even though our timeline is before the epilogue when Nate and Elena have a, have a girl, have a daughter, uh, we wanted something in the heartbeat right after Uncharted 4. And the fact that we get to delve in the Persian culture, treasure, and crush has been instrumental with that because uh, he is of Persian descent um, and it's just been incredible to, to delve into that and then um, we've had Daniello and Sarah that have, that have crafted a script that revolves around um, where are we doing? Um, <laughs> but grief um, and of course action and of course treasure um, 
and we just wanted to tell a damn good story that packed a punch, but also we want the audience to think. And a lot of films sometimes treat So it's different to Marvel. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, we, we want to emulate the games as much as possible. Like, you guys saw the POV when Batesy copped a leg stab from Karush, the, the, just stuff like that. And we, we do more of that in, in the full film, just paying respect to these characters. Um, and you, you know, the, 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 the thing that, that they're so well rounded and well written and deeply flawed. And uh, I think that's uh, what's so appealing about them. And just the storytelling, even, you know, you watch the cut scenes yeah. whilst you play and you don't want it to end. And you're like, oh shit, it's time to play. Um, <laughs> that's basically what I did. And like I said, I've surrounded myself with the greatest crew ever who just work their absolute asses off. Um, Yes, there you go. <laughs> Works for me. Um, so having all of that, having that idea, and then formulating that and putting it on Kickstarter to get some funding from a community of people that are like, yes, we need this. How could we live without it? Why did they not include this? What was that journey like? Uh, for that, that was a pretty, pretty much a very unique experience for us that we, we have a background in photography and video for years and when Chris approached us with this we knew that we wanted to make a movie for the fans and the biggest way for us to see was to craft a little concept trailer that we put on Kickstarter just to show people vaguely this is what we're aiming for. We want to, as you pointed out, some of the new, new modern movies are quite dull visually mm. and we wanted to say no if we're going to make an uncharted movie it has to look like the uncharted game it has to feel mm. like you're playing the game but we also wanted it to be open for people who haven't even played the game and understandable for people who are new to the uncharted world new to the uncharted characters and actually get to know them in our version of it so when we put it on Kickstarter, thanks to Chris, that was a really good idea. And we saw the fans genuinely wanted a faithful adaptation of their game, their beloved game, into a live action format. And me and Sarah told Chris at the start, we're not going to redo one, two, three, or four. They're too loved. If anything, people want to see more. They want to see the continuation they of their They want to see a new story that hasn't been done. They want to see new characters. And the support we got on Kickstarter was overwhelming. The support from everyone here. That's that's why we did it and that's what made it possible. Have you thought about doing have you thought about doing that with Star Wars? Like Mickey Mouse will come after us like there's no tomorrow. Um, so uh, the next really important question, um, that uh, I think everyone's really asking um, is uh, Ebony, what was it like to be a boom operator? Was it fun? It was great. Yeah, there was lots of really different shots there, and I couldn't see one microphone. <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> Not here at the moment, but oh, yeah, boom, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Shock. Okay, so you had two booms. Yeah. The other one was Madison Novak. Yeah, Madison Novak. Back home. Back in Sydney, but um, yeah, she deserves credit for that as well. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, two booms. <laughs> so that's the thing, when you get on set and you make uh, wonderful masterpieces like this, it is not just the people you see, it's the people that work behind the scenes as well. It's the whole family, the whole crew uh, of people that go together to make the magic that you just saw. Karush. Uh, Don't be nervous, it's fine. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, no, I, I met you uh, 20 minutes ago. So, you strike me as a really nice person. Um, you are very polite. You are obviously very intelligent. 
I'm doubting everything I know about you after seeing you up there. Are you a method actor? He's a fantastic actor, that's why. <laughs> Probably we couldn't have asked for a better villain. As you can tell, he's incredibly nice, as Ben was saying, but he plays an evil dude. Very <laughs> See, everybody's calling me the villain. Uh, I got a case of steak to that. <laughs>
Yeah, a lot of backwards. Hang on, hang on, that's fine. It's all right. I'm still going to sell it for a bit. Okay, so now you can talk to it. Oh man, this is a... Uh... No, it was a lot of backwards and forwards. John and I kind of have an opposite opinion when it comes to certain scenes sometimes. So I might think, for example, this scene needs like a lot of drums or something really epic. He might say like, no, nah, it needs like just one violin and one flute. And then we usually kind of meet in the middle. So yeah, it's a lot of backwards and forwards we'll get in the end. So I'm curious, how do you meet in the middle when one wants a violin and a flute? <laughs> is that a we'll via flute <laughs> or is it a... We'll put the flute and the violin. Flute and the violin, okay. Is it like a relationship where you compromise and everyone's unhappy? <laughs> <laughs> Except the Chris and Chloe, because they're amazing. <laughs> okay, so, oh, did you like that joke? <laughs> wow! Great! It's okay, they've been having some issues for a while. <laughs> so, um, Uncharted, The Oxus Redemption, uh, it is a fan film. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, how did you go about um, creating that sort of line, working out how long to make it? Because you said it's coming in at like an hour at the moment. It wasn't what? supposed to be. Why did you not just keep adding to it and make it a feature? So the feature thing we found out, because when we went to put this on IMDb, they actually give you the option, is it a feature or a short? And they classify a feature as 45 minutes plus. So we were like, oh, okay, sweet, it's a feature. We can, that's our excuse. Mm -hmm. But tell them how long it was originally supposed to be. It was supposed to be an actual short film, maybe like 15 All minutes. I wanted was a bloody cosplay reveal that went for a couple of minutes. <laughs> 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 now we're in fucking Melbourne. <laughs> And then we just thought we'd have to convince him. We presented him with a 50 page script and we said, You can pick a scene. Pick a scene. Pick one scene. And he's like, The whole thing. <laughs> okay, you realize that's going to be months of work, it's going to be expensive. He's like, We can do it. And thankfully, we formed a massive team to help and support us. Yeah. And so yeah. grateful for everyone that joined us along the way for everything and everyone that. Donated, and everyone's yeah. here right now. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so it's cool to stand up here and say it's an hour feature film. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do a Netflix start? Are you going to turn it into like a series after that? No. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this straight out. No. This is. The so one and done. This is one and done, but we have other projects in the works. Do like tell. Different. I won't tell anyone. Sarah? <laughs> Sarah? Um, do you guys like DC? Have you heard of DC? Like Washington. We were thinking about possibly Batman next. A Batman trip. Oh. But that's as most as we can say. We do have a story though. So it's different to DC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's exciting. So, uh, are there any final, because we've got the clock ticks on, as we know, uh, are there any final thoughts or words that each and every one of you have uh, on the film, on the project, uh, sorry, on the feature film, <laughs> according to IMDb, <laughs> uh, the project and where you see this project going once it's released into the wild and free range? I think, and I don't know if you guys agree, sometimes fan films get a bit of an instant pass, and that, you know. It's like being in high school. <laughs> you and I would have been best mates in high school, Sorensen. I hope so. <laughs> that would make um, me cooler. <laughs> I think just what we set out to do, obviously, was tell a good story, just uh, hopefully do these characters justice because they're just, again, so well written, but at the same time, show what 
you can do on not a massive budget. If the passion's there, you put in the hard yards, surround yourself with a good crew. Um, I think that's just, we just want our work to show through and just for people to watch and be like, everyone work their fucking asses off in front and behind the camera. Um, I think that's what we want to do the day. And again, just surround myself with the best crew ever. Um, that's pretty much it, man. Just, yeah, I'm very humble right now that, that I have a, a lot of dear friends in the audience right now that have stuck with me since uh, day one with this whole cosplay thing. Um, and um, one of my oldest friends from high school, just over there, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, so yeah, it's very humbling and that's what we want. We just want people to see our hard work and get inspired. I think that's why, because obviously we're doing this because we're inspired. Um, and you know, um, Batesy took it upon himself to research Sam Drake not having played the games and just dove headfirst into it. And just that commitment, that passion, you know, just let that get out in the wild and, you know, inspire other people. It's, That's beautiful. Yeah, like, I mean, life in general, man, like, you, you, you can watch us doing what, exactly what we're doing right now. Life is not, it, it's, it's not unattainable. If you create a goal, you can do it, right? Like, everything that's, like, you think is not, as I said, not attainable, it is very attainable. You create that goal, get it done, make it happen, can be exactly exactly what we're doing right now, man. Like, I love every one of these people up here, and it's just, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Between them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 
if I may say, Chris Stanley is pretty much, if you put Henry Cavill and Tom Cruise together, you get this man right here. <laughs> Did you do your own stunts? <laughs> we, had, we had to beat the shit out of each other. It was so fun. <laughs> present a token, let's just say a gift, for safe passage to Bactria. Three quarters of which were dug up in the 1880s by Indian merchants who were digging along the Oxus River. And then the British captain, Francis C. Burton, hears about it, donates it to the British Museum. Who Karush then buys. There's still one piece missing. The King's Bracelet. Yeah, it's gotta be there. I just don't know why you even care. Because it's not at the river in Bactria. But I thought, with you and your brother's track record, I could expect a little bit more from you. Your failure has cost you your family, Mr. Drake.
Word of advice, Karush? Don't miss this time.